According to CQ Money Line, which is Congressional Quarterly, it's a, it's a nonpartisan uh, paper, nearly 1,000 lobbyists have been hired in the year 2009. That is nearly double 2008, in particular for health care. Lobbying is a way of getting legislation passed in Washington, of informing people. But is the system out of control? Is it being abused? We have been tackling this from every angle over the past couple of weeks. And we want to bring in Dan Mitchell now, senior fellow at the Cato Institute, and Christian Weller, senior fellow at the Center for American... Uh, for, uh, so, uh, I'm sorry, you're, it just changed here right <laughs> in the middle, and I apologize progress. for that. <laughs> Something just completely flashed differently, so my bad. All right, so as you both know, we've been talking about this for a while on the show. Today, USA Today had a great analysis that they ran off of this CQ Moneyline study, and it showed this shocking number uh, in terms of health care uh, lobbying. It is perhaps not a coincidence, is it, Dan, that in the same year we see such a surge in health care spending on lobbying, all of a sudden, the estimates go from, say, big cap pharmaceutical companies shrinking over the next five years to, lo and behold, growing under the legislation. Look, the reason we have so many lobbyists in Washington is because government is enormously big and it's getting bigger. You ever go through an alley in the city and you see a bunch of rats outside a dumpster outside a restaurant? That's the same reason why we have lobbyists. When you have $4 trillion dollars of other people's money being distributed by the politicians in Washington, all the special interest groups in the country figure out, hey, let's hire lobbyists and get our share of the loot. Now, I want to be fair. There are some lobbyists that are actually not trying to steal other people's money, but instead are simply trying to protect themselves against a predatory government. Right. But the core message, the unquestionable fact is that big government creates a giant lobbying industry and all of us pay the price. Uh, you know, Christian, let's just take another example. USA Today looked at one area that I know all of us noticed as citizens, which is uh, come the end of this summer, a huge surge in advertising against a soda tax by beverage companies. American Beverage Association hired another lobbying firm this year. They spent $7.3 million on lobbying during a three-month period. In all of 2008, they only spent $668,000. And guess what? There's no soda tax in the legislation. Well, I mean, the thing here is that when you look at the healthcare industry writ large in the health insurance industry, it's a monopolistic industry. There's enormous profits here, and, and there is a public policy rationale here. There is a rationale to ultimately do things better, to make the system more efficient, uh, to have better regulation. And part of the very vibrant public policy discussion over that is the lobbying effort, the lobbying from senior citizen groups, from children's groups, from the uninsured as well as from the industry side. And, and I, I think everybody is bringing their arguments to the table, is making their best case. But I think it's also important to understand that this is an industry where there is enormous money right now. It goes towards profits for the pharmaceutical industry, for the doctors, for the health insurance companies. And to some degree, taxpayers who are subsidizing a lot of the healthcare sectors are saying, look, we want to make sure that our dollars are going further. There has to be new regulation to put in cost controls. And right. that's where the discussion is over. And, and you see this public discussion play out in so many different forms. One of them is the lobbying arena. The other one is these public demonstrations of the pro-healthcare reform, the anti-healthcare reform discussion. Those are just different aspects of the they, very they vibrant are, public discussion. They are, but isn't discussion. it fair to say, Christian, we keep coming back to this point, that when you follow where the money is and who's spending the most money to, quote, unquote, spend time with or inform lawmakers, those people are getting what they want. I mean, Steve Leisman had well, looked at one, if, a 22,000 percent return on every dollar spent on lobbying. When you, when you see, like, part of it is that it is a big government issue here because it's a very profitable industry and because healthcare is a big consumption item. Um, so there's a lot of money at stake generally, and it's more the question of where it falls. But if you look at the health of the lobbying dollars that is being, general, being spent generally on health insurance and healthcare reform, right. it's evenly divided between Democrats and Republicans. It goes a little bit more towards the party in power, in which case this is going a little bit more towards the Democrats. But generally, this is very evenly divided. It is there's so many different aspects, so many moving parts, and at this point, it's unclear where okay. this ultimately will end up. Dan. It's, it's, I mean, the other part, let me also address this. We have very strict regulations on lobbyists to prevent the kind of corruption that you're hinting at. It's not like I can go and buy a house for a lawmaker and the lawmaker then will give me more money. Well, not not directly, I guess. But you're right. That would be illegal, whether if we're, it was well, happening. Well, the, the last person Dan, who tried it were, was yes. convicted. So. Dan, a final word to you. Should we consider, though, uh, restrictions on how much lobbyists can spend, uh, you know, or donate to to campaigns? 
Well, the reality is, in our Bill of Rights, right in the First Amendment, we have the right to petition our government. So I've never thought that we should try to restrict involvement in the political process or restrict people's free speech. Instead, we should go after the actual symptom, which is big government. Lobbying is just a symptom. The fact that you have big pharma and the big insurance companies getting in bed with the White House to strike insider deals, that may not be technically legally corrupt, but it certainly does smell like a rotting fish on the beach, and oh. this is the problem. Government's involved with health care. Okay. It gives the powerful insiders a way to strike the deals behind closed doors. But Thank the you problem here right, is we... a very profitable industry that yes. needs to be regulated. Yes, and I think government that's is a very profitable discussion. industry. Well, we're going to tackle we're that next. Uh, we'll get to the, some of the issues of, of how to specifically change regulations that might help here. But that's coming up another day. Dan and Christian, in the meantime, have a